It's time for the One Bar and Lepica Show, bringing you anything and everything Minnesota Vikings. Welcome to professional football. All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lepica Show, and welcome to week one of the 2020 regular season. Woo! It's Packers week, baby. It's Packers one week. Bar. Get your fancy jacket on. Thank you. You know, dancing last night and that thing? No, I'm going to be dancing after this, so I guarantee it. Hell yeah. All right. Well, we're going to do some Vikings player predictions for the 2020 season. Uh, we do this every year. Uh, this is the first year we've done it on our channel. So um, pretty excited to get this kicked off and uh, see how things are going to shake out this year. Yeah, we're going to be talking anything from offensive player of the year to the most disappointing player of the year to surprise player of the year, everything of the year. Hell yeah. So let's, let's kick it off with a big one. Offensive player of the year. Who you got? Offensive player of the year for the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, I got Dalvin Cook. I think Dalvin Cook is going to absolutely light it up. I think they're going to um, pace him a little bit better than they did last year. You know, he ended with the injuries. He started to wear down a little bit. I think Alexander Madison will be a little bit more involved, giving Dalvin Cook even more of a chance to rip shit up. I think 1,500 yards, 10 touchdowns, boom. I think you are absolutely, completely, 100% correct. I also have Delvin Cook. Uh, contract year, he's, he wants to prove he's worth the money, um, whether it's with the Vikings or somebody else. He's going to be extra motivated this year. I think they kind of kept him out a little bit in the preseason to keep him fresh. And I think, yeah, he's ready to explode this year. And he, the offense is going to run through him. It has to, especially with the young receiving, receiving core. Uh, Cook's going to have quite the workload, uh, both as a receiver and a runner. And he will be the team's offensive player of the year yeah he's going to make the vikings wish that they signed him prior to this year he is going to light it up he is going to be pissed and hungry Mm -hmm. so am i all right let's go to the uh defensive side of the ball defensive player year player of the year for the minnesota vikings a lot to choose from yeah and mine might be a bit of a surprise pick but you might be able to guess it i'm going eric wilson linebacker uh again this guy is a 16 game starter even at the weak side position i think it's gonna have a huge year uh, he's one of these guys who can, you know, do it all. He can rush the passer. He can drop into coverage. He makes plays. He's just got that natural knack to make things happen. Uh, and if he gets in there every single game, gets his snaps, uh, I think he could definitely be the most productive of the Vikings linebackers. I'm super high on Eric Wilson this year, and he's going to play himself right out of being in purple next year. Wow. I, I, I am surprised. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. I love it. I think Eric Wilson is going to have a great year. So uh, that's wonderful. I'm going with the new, new guy. I'm going Yannick Ngakwe. I think he's going to come in 10 plus sacks uh, with Daniel Hunter and him out there. It's, it's going to be almost unfair at times. They're going to have to concentrate on somebody and Hunter's just getting better. So I think Ngakwe is going to, uh, I think he's going to light it up 10 plus sacks. I think on top of that, he is just going to get pressure after pressure. And uh, I think he's going to be in purple for years to come. He's going to make it hard for them not to pony up for him. Wow. Wow. All right. I like it. I like it. Uh, let's move on to the uh, let's call the bounce back player of the year a guy who maybe wasn't super great uh, last year, but is going to do a hell of a lot better in 2020. Yeah, I'm going. Uh, I'm going with my my beer belly here. I'm going with Mike Hughes, cornerback. He, uh, you know, two years in the league, injuries hasn't been out there a ton. Uh, this is his moment. Young, young group of corners. They're going to be looking at looking to him to uh, really lead these guys. Hopefully. And uh, I think Hughes is going to step up. I think he's going to show why he was that first-round pick and uh, be a very important part to this secondary. All right. I am actually going to go on the other side of the football and go with our center, Garrett Bradbury. Uh, Really up and down, roller coaster of a rookie year. Sometimes he looked good. Sometimes he looked horrible. Um, Supposedly, he's hit the weight room hard. He's gotten stronger so he can better anchor against those big interior nose tackles that just blew him up last year. Uh, and if he can do that, that'll be enough to, I think, he will, he'll become a solid starter. Uh, and that's all you really are looking for right now. Oda Bradbury's become a solid starter because other than the tackles, we don't have a solid starter on the line. Ho doggy. Ho doggy. Yeah, I, I, Garrett Bradbury needs to show up this year. He needs to be, he needs to be angry and pissed off and whoop some ass. If he doesn't, we're screwed. Absolutely screwed. Screwed so hard. Screwed. So hard. All right. Most disappointing player of the year. This is a Debbie Downer award, but damn it, we got to give it to somebody. I think we're going to have the uh, same one. No, we're not, because you already picked this guy for something else. I'm going Mike Hughes. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. I'm just, I, I, you know, maybe this is the year he, he is healthy, and we just see that he is not uh, cut out to be a corner in this league. Uh, even last year when he was in there, 
he was kind of guessing a little bit. Um, would leave too much of a cushion sometimes, would come up, miss the tackle. Uh, and then even when he had good position, somehow these receivers were still catching the football. Uh, Mari Cooper absolutely schooled him last year. Um, so, you know, if he if he's disappointing and he sucks, then you just you, you got replacements on the roster already. So I don't think it's going to hurt you too much in the long run. But it would just be very sad if uh, Hughes does not step up and, and does become a disappointing player. Well, I feel uh, I feel like I cheated on this one because it's not even really. I don't know. I went with Shamar Stefan. I just <laughs> I think he's. I'm not expecting a ton from him. I just think he's just going to work himself out of a position and other, these younger guys are going to come take his spot from him. Very low expectations for him. I hope he proves me wrong, but uh, Shamar Stefan. Yeah, well, I can see it. Uh, I'm, I'm disappointed he's starting. I'm disappointed he's on the team. Yeah. All right. Uh, surprising player of the year. Surprising player of the year. The big man next to Stefan, Jaleel Johnson. I think Jaleel Johnson, for, he's going to get a full year out there. He's going to be out there the whole time. Not, none of this bullshit where he's thrown in every once in a while. Last year when he was in there, he actually played well. And uh, with those defensive ends next to him and whoever is next to him at defensive tackle, I think Jaleel Johnson is going to push the Vikings to make, a, make him also get a contract after this year. He's going to be hungry. Yeah, he's He's in that contract year. He's got, you know, a ton to play for right now. And we saw a little bit late in the season last year. So hopefully he can build off that and, you know, get in there and create that interior havoc that we need. Uh, my surprising player would be, I think, even a bigger surprise. And that's, uh, I went with Dakota Dozier. Uh, he's likely going to be your left starting guard. And um, you know what? He's worked his ass off this preseason. He's, he's done everything asked of him. He's moved around. And I think uh, he's going to be motivated, and he's going to finally show that uh, why you call him the Dakosher. And he is going to hold his own left guard, a major upgrade over Elfline last year, and solidify this unit of protection for Kirk Cousins and a running game. The Dakosher. You know what? I'm, I'm very surprised that Pat Elfline has not won a single preseason award yet. Uh, yeah, well, it's just He should have been. Yeah, he should have been considered. Oh, he was considered. I actually took him off one because it was too easy. No. Oh. Most disappointing? No, rookie of the year. No. Oh, all right. Rookie of the year. Who do you got? A lot of options here. When you draft 15 rookies, uh, you got a lot of choices. Uh, but I went with the the guy who made all the buzz this preseason, the cornerback Cameron Dansler. I think he's going to be on the field early and often for the Vikings, um, whether it's on the outside uh, or playing nickel, whatever he ends up doing. I think Dansler is going to have an impact. Uh, one of these guys who just – Looks like they naturally have it. They get it. Um, not afraid to go up, you know, one-on-one -on -one with Thielen. Great job going up, timing the football, swatting away when it gets there. So uh, Cameron Dancer, I know he's not the fastest guy out there, but his technique is very, very strong. And in college, he shut down some of the best, and maybe that'll carry over into the NFL. Oh, can't wait. I can't wait. I'm going offense. I'm going Justin Jefferson. I'm going with their first-round pick. I think, uh, you know, B.C. Johnson right now is there too, but I think Jefferson takes that over. And uh, I, I see 60-plus receptions from this guy. He is going to make the Vikings offense extra, extra potent. And uh, I think he's the real deal. I think he's going to show up as a rookie. I thought you were going to say wet for some reason instead of potent there. No. No, it wasn't. Potent. Potent was the word all along. Awesome. All right. Uh, who this is the final hurrah award? Who is in their last season in purple? A um, couple of obvious ones here, but uh, – See where you went with this. Yeah, we need to soak these players in. They could they could be in a completely different uniform after this year. I'm going I'm going with Anthony Barr. That 12.3 million tag he's going to have next year is just a lot for a 29 year old linebacker. I know Anthony Barr when it comes to stats doesn't show everything that he does. He makes uh, offenses scheme around him, but uh, unless he restructures, that is a hell of a lot of money. So I think Anthony Barr is in his final hurrah. Uh, okay, so you went with a guy who maybe some fans would be sad to see go. I went with a guy who fans will not be sad to go. And I went with Shamar Stefan. Uh, you already talked about him. Uh, just kind of a – he was just – he's kind of there. So he became the starter after Pierce opted out. Um, hopefully he looks like the 2017 Shamar Stefan we saw when he was a pretty damn good run stuffer. Uh, my hopes are not very high for that happening after, you know, seeing him last year. Um, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if his final hurrah comes after week three. Oh, no. Oh, man. Shamar, my man. 
<laughs> All right. Let's every year we have this game. Every year we have a game where we just do not show up and we just blow it. Uh, what what will be the game this year that the Vikings step on their dick and lose that they should have won? Well, and I don't think they necessarily have to lose it. You look at the Denver game last year, they definitely stepped on their dick for that one, but were able to pull it out in the end. And maybe Kirk that's Cousins. the case with, with, with the game I picked. But uh, Jacksonville Jaguars coming here early December. Uh, this is a shitty, shitty football team who look like they're tanking for the first pick next year. Um, the issue is this. Um, easy for the Vikings to overlook this team. On the schedule coming up after that game, they have Tampa Bay, Chicago, and New Orleans. Uh, so big division game, big uh, conference games coming up. So you can easily see Jacksonville coming in. Team just says, ah, this team sucks balls, not even going to try. And then they just step on their dicks, get punched in the mouth. Garner wow. Mishnew leads the Jaguars to an unforeseen victory. Oh, God, I couldn't imagine the amounts of high life light I would drink if that was the case that we lost to the Jag I don't know if I could name six Jaguars right now. Gardner Minshew? I mean, I don't know any Jaguars. Miles Jack, is he still there? Yeah. They, got oh, jeez, that would, that would be man. stepping on everybody's dick in Minnesota. Uh, I went with uh, Monday night, November 16th, against the Bears in Chicago. Bears are not going to be very much better than the Jags this year. They have that defense, but, man, they have our number, especially prime time. Um, it's, uh, it's not going to be great. I, 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 think, I think that's a game that I'm a little bit worried about. Troop's just going to destroy us? He usually does. Not with his arm, with his legs. All right, well, let's, all three of them. Let's go on the flip side of that. Let's go to the surprise victory. What win? The Vikings didn't get that no one really expects them to this year. They did it last year. I think the Dallas game was one. Um, I didn't expect them to win that game. They did. So what do you got? What do you got this year? Um, you know, we've done pretty well against these guys lately, but I got them beating the Saints on Christmas on the road. Uh, very, very tough game. It's going to be late in the season. The Saints are not going to be very uh, friendly to us. We've kind of owned them the last two playoff games. But uh, I got the Vikings going in and doing it again. All right, I'm going to go with a, a game where the Vikings are finally going to do it this year. Every year, it seems like we go to Seattle on Monday night and, uh, and end up losing that game. We got really close last year. Kirk Cousins kept us in it, but we couldn't pull it out in the end. This is the year. The Vikings going to Seattle, destroy the 12th man and the Seahawks, and get that Monday night victory. Hell yeah. Let's do it. Oh, man, that would be fantastic. Last year, was it last year we got false hope? Who, who got the touchdown right yeah. off the bat? Uh, Harris. And that's Harris. Armand Watts swap. Picked it off. We thought this is the year. We're going to do it. Didn't happen. Yeah, a couple of uh, turd plays early in the second half. I think, we're, I think we're 0 and 40 against the Seahawks over the last three years. Yeah. Damn Pete Carroll and his gum chewing. All right, let's wrap this thing up with the MVP of the Minnesota Vikings for 2020. Who do you got? Oh, I'm going to go Delvin Cook. I think, uh, again, I, I, we both have huge expectations for him in that contract year. I'm going to say he finally stays healthy all 16 games. Shows us why he's one of the best running backs in the NFL and puts up pants droppingly good numbers. Um, again, whether he stays in Minnesota or not, um, he's going to make himself a lot of damn money next year. Yep. I got Dalvin. You said it. You already said it all. Um, this is going to be his year. That's all I got. You already said it. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, be Last before, thing. We, before we get into the final, final record, we gotta we gotta at least look at some of the guys that didn't even get a mention. I mean, Adam Thielen, Kirk Cousins, Daniil Hunter, Eric Kendricks, not even a sniff at Eric any of these. Smith. Well, I mean, they could have. You could have you could put Cousins in offensive player of the year. I think that's fair. But uh again, we both see it going a little different this year. All right. When it's all said and done, the regular season is wrapped up. Unlike your hog, what do you think the Vikings will finish? For a record uh i got them at 10 and 6 uh this is kind of a weird season where you don't really know what's going to happen how long the season's even going to go who's going to get sick who's not um the first few weeks of the season could be some ugly football with no preseason going on um but i do think they are going to be a better team than um the most of the teams in the division i got them 10-6 finishing first in the nfc north wow i got uh, i got 10 and 6 i got them getting the wild card you know, the Packers are going to be uh, – I got the Packers winning the division just because, I mean, 13-3 and three last year, I think Aaron, Aaron Rodgers comes out more pissed off than ever. Um, I think they'll either be really good or real bad, but I think the Vikings will be 10-6. and six, But I think they'll be better than their record shows. I think they'll actually be better than they were last year, but 10-6. Uh, and six. 
Yeah, and there's plenty of questions. The young secondary, the offensive line, our run defense, uh, there's definitely some major concerns heading into this. So hopefully uh, those issues do not turn out to be major, uh, you know, kind of backbreakers. You know, you know what one of those losses won't be? It won't be against Jacksonville. Well, you know what? You said the same thing against the Bills that one year. Oh, and God, um, you're right, I did. I did. You got killed. Yeah, Bills fans are still giving a shit about that. All right, well, here's something you cannot get shit about. Scientists have found evidence of takeout restaurants in ancient Pompeii. 